Welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School Lesson for Sunday, January 26. We are still in Unit 2 for the Winter Quarter, which is entitled Dedicating the Temple of God. Uh, we're in Lesson 9 uh, from the Faith Pathway Adult Quarterly. Our lesson title is Commitment to Success. Commitment to Success. Devotional reading uh, taken from Psalms 136, verses 1 to 16, and then verses 23 to 25. Background scripture taken from 1 Kings chapter 8, verses 54 to 66. And our printed and lesson passage is from 1 Kings chapter 8 verses 54 to 61. Uh, we um, are continuing a series of lessons uh, surrounding the historical narrative that uh, recounts the building or completion of the temple uh, in Jerusalem and the replacing of the Ark of the Covenant uh, in that temple in the Holy of Holies and of course all the the, the, the praise and uh, and sacrificing uh, that surrounded uh, this uh, dedication which happened to be at the Feast of Tabernacles uh, I should say on the occasion of the Feast of Tabernacles which we'll learn in our lesson well, uh, not in our lesson text, actually, but in some of the background, uh, was extended by some seven days. And uh, we, uh, we're going to be focusing on uh, three aims from the Faith Pathway Adult Quarterly. The first is uh, study Solomon's Prayer of Dedication. Uh, we got into that last week, and we're going to... Uh, see him finalize that prayer and charge the people uh, the Israelites Uh, number two affirm God's continued faithfulness to his people and then number three commit yourselves to obeying all of God's commands the adult quarterly lesson has two major divisions after the introduction the first is a, a Congregational blessing that's covered between 1 Kings 8, 54 and 57. And the second is a creational blessing. And that's covered between chapter 8, verses 58 and 61. From the standard commentary, our lesson title is Solomon Anticipates Praise. Solomon Anticipates Praise. Additional aims from the standard are summarize the content of Solomon's final words at the temple of de- temple dedication. Number two, explain the relationship between the Israelites living faithfully and remembering God's fulfilled promises. And then number three, write a prayer that recalls God's faithfulness and that anticipates his future work. This lesson has two major outlines as well. The first is Solomon's blessings, verses 54 to 56. And the second is Solomon's desire, verses that's covered between verses 57 and 61. So to give a a little additional background, um, we know that the ark has been brought to the temple uh, that has been completed by Solomon Uh, And there's a great procession from where David had placed it in a tent or or a tabernacle to the temple grounds and actually placing it in the uh, innermost part of the temple, the Holy of Holies. And we know that there was um, great uh, praise going on at the time, singing and um, the use of musical instruments and how God's glory manifested itself in a cloud, a thick cloud, uh, inside the temple itself, so much so that the priest could not minister. And Solomon, at this point, is standing and facing the temple as all this is going on. Uh, he has had erected 
a platform. Sorry about that interruption. He's had a platform uh, erected that's uh, approximately seven feet, seven and a half feet square by four and a half feet high and overlaid with brass or brazen uh, before the altar. And he's also expanded the um, the area between the temple and the brazen altar to make room for a greater number of sacrifices uh, during this dedication. So now Solomon has also, uh, we learned last week, uh, offered, he's kneeled now and he's uh, stretched his arms uh, heavenward and he has uh, thanked God for his past faithfulness and then he has asked seven petitions of the Lord concerning his people, and he's asked the Lord to look toward to look uh, on the temple day and night, and as his people pray toward as, as they sin and repent of their sins, and then pray toward the temple and ask forgiveness that God would forgive them. And he he asked seven specific. Uh, petitions, including uh, one for God to forgive his his people if they sin to the point that they were taken captive uh, or the Lord caused them to be taken captive if they prayed from a foreign land in captivity toward the place that God would and they and they truly repented from the heart that God would forgive them and and restore them. So with that as background, let's read uh, our first passage. Uh, Let's read verses 54 to 57. And it was so that when Solomon had made an end of praying all this prayer and supplication unto the Lord, he arose from before the altar of the Lord from kneeling on his knees with his hands spread up to heaven. And he stood and blessed all the congregation of Israel with a loud voice, saying, Blessed be the Lord that hath given rest unto his people Israel, according to all that he promised. There hath not failed one word of all his good promise, which he promised by the hand of Moses his servant. And the Lord our God be with us as he was with our fathers. Let him not leave us nor forsake us. And by the way, our key verse begins with verse 57. It's verse, the key verses are 57 and 58. And they are, again, the Lord our God be with us as he was with our fathers. Let him not leave us nor forsake us that he may in, that we may rather, he may rather incline our hearts unto him to walk in all his ways and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, which he commanded our fathers. And that's verses 57 and 58. Now, verse 1, I'm sorry, verse 54 says, uh, and It was so that when Solomon had made an end of praying all this prayer and supplication, that's what we read and studied last week, uh, unto the Lord. So he prays and he makes supplication, and you Bible students know that supplications mean specific requests, uh, not, uh, Lord, bless bless our people, uh, your people, rather, generally, as a general statement, but he made specific requests concerning <clears throat> the people and, and when they committed various sins and, uh, and repented of those sins from the heart. He said he rose from before the altar of the Lord from kneeling on his knees with his hands spread upward toward heaven. Now, God, now Solomon had been addressing his prayers, of course, to the Lord. He is... Uh, assumed a, a position of humility before the true king. While he was anointed king of, of Israel, he acknowledges the true king of kings and lord of lord. And this posture of kneeling with his arms stretched for, forth 
uh, toward heaven not only expressed humility, but it also expressed uh, an expectation of uh, receiving what he was asking for with his arms extended. Uh, it, it, it also suggests uh, a complete submission uh, to the one uh, with whom uh, Solomon was praying. Verse 55. Now, let me... Now, you know, I, we've had some discussion in our class at church about uh, uh, what prayer should include. Uh, and as we know, there are some model prayers uh, that uh, are in the Bible. Uh, and I've <clears throat> uh, often referred to the acronym uh, ACTS, and many of you have heard that uh, as a reminder of how to order a prayer before the Lord. And it's an acronym which, in which the A stands for adoration, the C for confession, confession of our sins, the T stands for thanksgiving. We want to thank God for all that he's done. Uh, and then the S stands for supplication. That's when we make our specific requests. We don't I don't think typically want to start out asking for things, a long list of things. Uh, we want to uh, express our adoration, confess our sins, thank the Lord, and then uh, ask for what we desire, supplication. Verse 55, And he stood and blessed all the congregation of Israel with a loud voice, saying, now, we talked uh, in prior lessons about um, Solomon's blessing of the people. And while we know that customarily that was something a function of the priest, uh, it was not that uncommon for others to uh, pronounce blessings upon uh, others, uh, people. And, and what uh, is intended, of course, when... Uh, a person blesses another person or a group is to express a desire that God's approval and goodwill would rest on them. Uh, it invites uh, God to invest them with success and fruitfulness and long life, uh, one of the commentators says. And he gives examples in Genesis chapter 24, verse 60 where Rebecca is blessed and, and pronounced the mother of thousands of millions. Uh, and uh, there are several other places where blessings are pronounced on people by, by those other than the priests. And uh, he spoke with a, a loud voice, uh, perhaps for two reasons. Uh, number one, he wanted to be heard. It was a huge crowd there and uh, didn't have a microphone or amplifier. But also, uh, he was uh, uh, enthusiastic, and he was committed to what he was saying. Uh, and I think that uh, when you are excited and enthusiastic and firmly committed to what you're saying, uh, you can speak loudly and confidently. Verse 56a Blessed be the Lord that hath given rest unto his people Israel according to all that he promised. Now, the again, the last verse said he, he spoke loudly uh, saying, blessed be the Lord. Now, when we uh, see this expression, uh, someone blessing the Lord, it uh, I very often uh, transfer uh, or put in place of blessed praise. He's also it, it's a, it's an expression of honor and praise to God. So he says, "Praise be the Lord that hath given us rest." Well, what rest is this he's talking about? Well, he says, "According to all that He had promised, uh, the Lord had promised rest to His people." in several places uh, in the Old Testament. I think the first place we see see it is in uh, Exodus. Um, Exodus chapter 33 and verse 14. 
uh, Moses has um, uh, told the Lord, he's, he's told him to bring these people up, and he's wanting to know who's going to go with them through this wilderness. And, uh, and verse uh, 14 says, And he said, this is God speaking to Moses, My presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. He's going to give Moses rest concerning uh, leading of the people. We see it again in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 12, uh, verses 9 and 10, where the Lord, speaking through Moses, says, For ye are not as yet come to the rest and to the inheritance which the Lord your God giveth you. But when you go over Jordan and dwell in the land which the Lord your God giveth you to inherit, and when he giveth you rest from all your enemies round about, so that ye shall dwell in safety. And the Lord promises rest, uh, as I said, several places to his people. And that is generally what the Lord wants for his people. That is uh, Joshua uh, chapter 1, 13 is one other and we're going to move on here. And there Joshua says, Remember the word which Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you, saying, The Lord your God hath given you rest and has given you this land. So the rest spoken of uh, throughout the Old Testament was concerning the land and peace in the land. Of course, uh, we know that uh, under the new covenant, uh, uh, of course, we've, we've been given rest for our souls as well, and not to say that they weren't given rest for their souls as well. Then, verse fifty-six b. There hath not failed one word of all his good promise, which he promised by the hand of his servant Moses, or Moses his servant. Now, the the nation Israel at the time of this dedication is experiencing the promised rest or the rest that God promised. You remember uh, God told David that uh, uh, he could not build the temple because uh, he was a bloody man and he had shed much blood on the earth. But his son, who would be uh, a man of rest because he would give him rest. Uh, rest and his name was to be called Solomon because of that would build the temple. Uh, so they're experiencing this rest. They experience uh, rest because of the conquests of David and of course Solomon uh, is, uh, through under Solomon's reign they experienced some 40 years of peace. Um, but uh, you know God has been faithful. Solomon is acknowledging the faithfulness of God throughout uh, the history of uh, the Israelites. You know, uh, Joshua twenty three fourteen. when Joshua is about to die and he charges the people. This is when they've come in and uh, the land has been divided among the tribes. And, and in chapter 23, verse 14 of Joshua, he says, And behold, this day I am going the way of all the earth. And ye know in all your hearts, and in all your souls, that not one thing hath failed of all the good things which the Lord your God spake concerning you, all are come to pass unto you, and not one thing hath failed thereof. So God has, has been faithful to his promises throughout the history of the Israelites, and of course because of that, Solomon can have confidence that God is going to continue to be faithful to his people. Now, we know despite the fact that um, uh, Solomon uh, is praying this beautiful prayer uh, for the people, and he'll later charge them to be faithful uh, in his later years, uh, he, um, uh, his heart was turned away from the Lord by his, by his many wives. Uh, and, uh, of course, uh, the Lord uh, told Solomon that he was going to allow him to, uh, uh, to live out the rest of his life in peace, but uh, he was going to divide the, the kingdom afterwards, and we know that that happened after Solomon's death as a consequence of Solomon's turning, allowing his heart to be turned 
from the Lord in his latter years. Now, just a, another word about rest. As I said earlier, the, the rest that uh, is being spoken of uh, here is, again, peace, uh, uh, you know, no um, having uh, no um, wars with their enemies. Uh, it's a peace in the land. Uh, we see in Hebrews chapter 4, and, and if you read the passage, uh, verses 1 to 14, the rest that uh, that the Lord promises us, uh, he says in verse 3, 4, we which have believed do enter into rest, as he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. For, verse 4, for he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise, and God did rest the seventh day from all his works. Now he's he's using the Sabbath day which he commanded the children to observe for physical rest as a metaphor for the rest of our souls and our spirit that he will ultimately give those believers, all believers, Jew and Gentile. But, but do read that passage. Let's move on to uh, verse 57. And here we get into Solomon's desires uh, or desire from the standard commentary. The Lord, our God, will be with us as he was with our fathers. Let him not leave us nor forsake us. Now, this is Solomon's desire for the Lord's presence. Uh, again, we, we recall that in the passage that I, our verse that I read earlier, God promised to be with Moses. And he also, we know in the first chapter of uh, Joshua, he says, as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you or forsake you. The Lord promises us that uh, throughout the Old Testament. Uh, and also, we know in the New Testament, uh, we know uh, ultimately the Lord Jesus promise to be with us always, even until the end of the world, the end of the age in Matthew chapter 28 verses uh, 19 and 20. And, and many of us understand that to mean he, not, not, he's going to be with us in spirit, but certainly he'll be with us to empower us to do the, the evangelical work that this great commission commands us to do. The Lord also told us in John chapter 14, verse 18, he would not leave us comfortless, but he would send another comforter to be with us. And this is one of the same type, the paracletus. And we know this is the Holy Spirit. So the Lord is with us always. And he says, where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Uh, so there, there are many, many um, uh verses and passages that we can go to in the New Testament that speak of God's presence with the believers. And and even um, we, we know that we are temples of the Holy Spirit. And he, uh, as the Lord said, he, he, he has been uh, with you, but will be in you forever. But Solomon is asking the Lord to be in the midst of his people uh, to he's gonna um, in a few minutes here uh, we will be talking about how he's going to ask the Lord to 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 incline their hearts or to to help them to be obedient to His Word. He says, as they were with our fathers, and the fathers are uh, primarily the patriarchs. Uh, they are the uh, of course Abraham, Isaac. And Jacob, and then the twelve sons of Jacob, uh, and then those who were faithful, those who were faithful uh, to uh, the Lord, uh, the Lord's word and His commandments. Uh, I think is what uh, who uh, Solomon is referring to, who God actually showed Himself to and showed His presence to. Certainly among them, David. Uh, the Lord was with David, and the Lord, uh, uh, we know that David was a prophet uh, 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 as well as king, uh, and the Lord uh, actually kept all of the promises that he made to him, 
even the promise that uh, that his throne would be established forever and that we know that that ultimately was fulfilled in the Lord Jesus Christ is being fulfilled as we speak. Verse 58, that he may incline our hearts unto him to walk in all his ways and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments which he commanded our fathers. Let's read that from the NIV. Uh, and it reads, May he turn our hearts to him, to walk in obedience to him, to keep the commands, decrees, and laws he gave our ancestors. So uh, Solomon is recognizing that God's people are, are not going to be able to be obedient to God's laws and commandments without his help uh, in, their, in their own strength they are they're going to succumb to their desires their evil desires they're going to sin and that is as it is today you know uh we know the new testament tells us we can do all things through christ who strengthen us in fact christ says without me you can do nothing and that is nothing good uh we know that um the holy spirit empowers us we are to walk in the spirit and we will not obey the lust of the flesh and that means we are to walk by the enablement of the spirit, and we will not obey the lust of the flesh. We, we are not able to, to live uh, the kind of life, the upright Christian life that God wants us to be without his power. He said he will dwell in us. Uh, he said, and he will, be, he will be our God, and we will be his people. He will dwell in us and walk in us, and he will be our God, and we will be his people. So we know that um, as um, Solomon recognized then that uh, his people, the, the Lord's people, were going to need his assistance in being the, the ambassadors, uh, the faithful ambassadors that he intended for them to be to the world. We'll see this in a minute uh, as he does. And we know that as well as Christians. Now we... If we were to go back to Deuteronomy chapter, actually 5, beginning at chapter 5, verse 31, and read through chapter 6, verse 9, we see where Moses um, is, is charging this uh, generation that was about to go into possess the land uh, to keep the commandments of the Lord and how important it is to uh, and he uh, included in that passage is the Shema beginning at verse 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, mind, and uh, soul, and, and with all thy might. And, and he's telling them there to teach them to their children. Well, he is recognizing uh, that, uh, that faithfulness to God, obviously, a relationship with God, I should say, begins with obedience. And that obedience... Uh, really has to be something that comes from a sincere heart. And we know, again, uh, the natural man uh, is does not have the heart that pleases God. We have to be, uh, our heart has to be turned, if you will, as, as uh, Solomon says, inclined to the Lord. The heart being, of course, the seat of, of not only our emotions, but our will, uh, and even our intellect uh, in this context. And the fact that, that, that Solomon mentions uh, what seem to be uh, synonyms, uh, commandments, statutes, and judgments, uh, really speaks of uh, the fact that they are to, uh, to obey the entirety of God's laws, of God's commandments, uh, un unwavering, they're to be unwavering in their obedience to all that God has commanded. Verse 59, and let these my words wherewith I have made supplication before the Lord be nigh unto the Lord our God day and night that he maintain our cause of his servant or the cause rather of his servant and the cause of his people Israel at all times as the matter shall require. Let's read that from the NIV. And it reads, And may these words of mine, which I have prayed before the Lord, 
be near to the Lord our God day and night, that he may uphold the cause of his servant and the cause of his people, Israel, according to each day's need. So what God is is, is asking uh, for, of course, is something that, as we mentioned last week, God has already promised. He doesn't sleep. He doesn't slumber. Uh, and we know his eyes are ever over the righteous and his ears are open unto our cry. Um, but he is asking for the Lord to uh, uh, to be attentive, continually attentive to the supplication. And that is the specific list of requests that he's made. Uh, and not only his, but to those supplications or those specific requests made by his people uh, in every matter. And basically he's saying, whatever matter they bring before you, Lord, be continuously uh, attentive to those needs. And of course, we know God is. I mean, uh, God hears uh, our prayers. And, 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 and we all know, those of us um, <clears throat> who've been walking with the Lord for a while, know that the Lord answers our prayers. Uh, he answers, yes, in the affirmative by giving us what we want in uh, perhaps a time frame that we would desire it. Uh, he answers, no, uh, this is not what I want for you. Uh, and sometimes that's difficult for uh, for even seasoned Christians to accept until the Holy Spirit, until they allow the Holy Spirit to give them understanding. Again, to remind them, I should say, that God's ways are not ours. His thoughts are higher than ours as the heaven is above the earth. And he, uh, and we have no wisdom compared to his, <clears throat> not even concerning our needs and our desires. And then third, he answers, wait, you know, this is not the time. You know, I often, uh, <clears throat> uh, he is a perfect, the perfect father, the perfect parent. I often uh, <clears throat> make the analogy, if a five-year-old were to ask uh, you for the car keys, uh, you would not give him the car keys, and he wants them right now. And you would say no, uh, but intending once he's mature enough uh, and he's uh, been adequately trained, you will give him the car keys. So uh, God oftentimes wants us to wait uh, for the, his timing, the perfect timing. Uh, and so, so Solomon is asking that uh, very simply that the Lord... Uh, answer the prayers and meet the daily needs of his people. Uh, Matthew chapter 6 verse 11, um, the, 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 the prayer that the Lord, the model prayer that the Lord gave his, uh, his disciples was to give us our daily bread. This is what um, Solomon is speaking of, that the Lord answer the, the, the prayers for daily needs, to the daily needs of his people. Let's move on to verse 60a, that all the people of the earth may know that the Lord is God. Now, um, this prayer, this dedicatory prayer and Solomon is winding down, uh, really reflects God's ultimate desire uh, for uh, Israel, how he intended to use the nation Israel to reveal himself to the world. That has been, that was God's intent from the time he called Abraham back in Genesis chapter 12. Read verses, uh, Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 to 3, then 22, 18. And God's purpose was through Abraham's seed to bless all the nations of the world all the nations would come to know him through the seed of Abraham. We see in First Chronicles uh, chapter 16, part of a, a psalm of David, where, um, look at verses 23 and 24, where he says, Sing unto the Lord all the earth, show forth from day to day his salvation. Declare his glory among the heathen, his marvelous works among the nations. Well, who is to do the declaring. 
God's people are to do the declaring. God's people are to proclaim his marvelous works in their midst. And, 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 and they are to live lives that are totally distinct from the rest of the world that honor God according to God's law. And, and that's to be an example for the, for the people, how they are to exhibit the wisdom of God for the world. They are to be, they were to be the salt and the light that God has also called, called the Christians to be, the ambassadors uh, of the Lord uh, to the world, to all the nations. Part B um, says, and that there is none else. There is no other God. And this, this, uh, what they were to demonstrate in belief in one God, monotheism, was in stark contrast to what all the nations around them believed. The heathen believed in many gods. They had gods uh, representing in different areas of their life, and then they believed in regional or territorial gods, and uh, the the nation Israel was to show uh, the world that there was only one God who was uh, in control, in sovereign control of everything, of the universe. Now, read Acts chapter seventeen when Paul deals with the Athenians. Uh, and uh, he tells them uh, that he perceived that they were superstitious. Uh, they had all these statues of these uh, of these various gods, uh, and then they had one monument to an unknown god in case they missed any. You know, they wanted to make sure that they didn't offend anybody. And Paul preached to them about the unknown god, the one that they didn't know who was the true and only god. Uh, so uh, this is uh, what the people of Israel were to demonstrate, uh, were to profess, were to model in their obedience to the Lord's commandments, his wise commandments that uh, they were to give testimony of the true and living God. As we are today, we are ambassadors, we are a peculiar uh, a royal priesthood. Uh, and we are to intercede for uh, the world. And finally, verse 61. In verse 61, Paul actually gives his desire for the people's hearts, or he charges the people. He said, let your heart, therefore, be perfect with the Lord our God, to walk in his statutes and to keep his commandments as at this day. Let's read that from the NIV, and it reads, And may your hearts be fully committed to the Lord our God, to live by his decrees and obey his commands as at this time. So uh, while um, Solomon has been praying to the Lord, he's been laying out his supplications before the Lord, uh, he's asked the Lord to incline uh, the hearts of his people, uh, and 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 actually, uh, he recognized, of course, that the people would need the power of God to live the kind of faithful lives that God wanted them to live. So he wanted them to turn. He wanted him to turn their hearts toward him, and to help them uh, to be obedient. And they were to be obedient. Because uh, there was the one only true God who and who had delivered them first from bondage, who had brought them through the wilderness, who had settled them in the land and given them the promised rest, uh, who had done all these things for him, for them. And of course, because he had been faithful in the past, they could certainly look forward to him being faithful in the future. Remember, he had not failed to fulfill any promise, uh, which is how Solomon began this closing, the closing remarks of this dedicatory prayer or this dedication. Now, unfortunately, we know that, <clears throat> uh, again, uh, Solomon failed in his faithfulness to the Lord. His heart was turned uh, from the Lord. Uh, we read about that in 1 Kings chapter 11, verse 4. 
uh, and, the, and the nation uh, that led to the fracturing of the nation, uh, chapter 11, verse uh, thir 9 to 13. And of course, we know that the kings that followed, uh, some of them did what was good and what was right in the sight of the Lord. We, we recall Hezekiah and Josiah, but others uh, were... Uh, did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. They did not do as their father David had done. And ultimately, there was a spiral down of both the northern and the southern kingdoms that led to both their captivities, the northern kingdom in 722 uh, B.C. and ultimately Judah or the southern kingdom in 586 B.C. But the Lord uh, has still remained faithful not only to David uh, but his but but Abraham in blessing uh, the world through his seed and both have been accomplished through Jesus Christ uh, Jesus Christ came the greater son of David uh, and he will sit on the throne of David but he came uh, as heir to the throne of David uh, and he has established his kingdom in the hearts of believers. He will establish his throne forever. Actually, he is seated on the throne next to his father in heaven. And we see in Revelation how he will be seated on the throne of, of God. And uh, we read about that in uh, Revelation chapter 7 uh, where the Lord, let me just uh, read 17. Um, and the, and the Lord is sitting on the throne in the temple, and it says, And the Lord which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and shall lead them unto living fountains of water, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. So we, we, we see that uh, uh, we are, as, as Solomon charges the people, uh, he recognizes that at the moment this day they are obedient i mean they are uh, probably awestruck by what's going on at the temple uh we read in second chronicles chapter 7 read between verses 1 and 3 how uh, the lord uh, rained down fire from heaven and consumed the sacrifices the many sacrifices that were being made and and in in, in in addition uh, his glory was manifested again in the temple as Solomon concluded this dedicatory prayer. Uh, uh, this thick cloud appeared again in the temple. And so the people actually um, uh, acknowledged uh, this and blessed uh, God in the midst of all that was going on there. Second Chronicles uh, 7 verse 3 says, And when all the children of Israel saw how the fire came down, and that the glory of the Lord and the glory of the Lord upon the house, they bowed themselves with their faces to the ground upon the pavement and worshiped and praised the Lord, saying, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. So Solomon is saying they are submitted now. They are acknowledging uh, God, uh, who God is, and they are worshipful. And he is wanting that to continue as it is this day. So I hope that we have uh, gotten something uh, by example that will um, help us in our, our, our acknowledgement of God's faithfulness uh, to us. All of his promises are yea and amen. And because he has been faithful, we can trust him to be faithful in our own lives, in every matter, small or great. Uh, uh, and, and, and we are to, to lay up, uh, uh, our, we are to lay our petitions before him in faith, uh, not doubting, uh, and trusting that God will always do what's best for his children. So we pray that God will ever bless you, uh, in Jesus name. Amen.